I'm going to give a, a little bit of a uh, insight. Is that even on? A little bit of insight on um, on the on kind of a post mortem of uh, my game called Blizz Words. It's a very simple game, but uh, but a game that I was able to develop all by myself uh, completely. Uh, sound, art, program, and uh, everything. Uh, I really, honestly, thought a lot about what I was going to share today. Uh, it was very. I know your time is precious. I know your, um, and so so that really weighed on me. So I really wanted to share uh, what was important. And I know if you're here and if you've played the game before, you're probably not here because of the technical prowess of the game or certainly because of the creative genius behind it. Um, so I wanted to share with you a little bit about my story and then of course I wanted to get into the, an actual postmortem of the game as well. But uh, another reason why I'm excited to uh, to be here, we can go ahead and go one frame, I'm excited to be here is because I get to share with you uh, a little bit about my, my accident and what happened to me. And, and the reason why I'm excited about that is because I've never been able to be fully uh, upfront with my wife about kind of what happened. Uh, she she just wouldn't understand. But I had I had been in the industry for about ten years as an art, uh, working from as an artist up to a uh, studio art director in the industry. And I had just broken off on my own. Uh, I was uh, out of development a little bit, but still servicing development. Um, education or executives and managers and uh, development leads uh, with an information and education business and I was uh, I was just about to debut I've been doing it for about six months just about to debut at a GDC in San Jose just south of here and I was taking a little break it was the Thursday before the Monday we were debuting at, at GDC Taking a little break, I went out uh, to ride uh, my motorcycle with a bunch of friends in the in the in the desert by my home. I live in Riverside, California, and uh, I was out um, just driving down a a dirt lane. I was alone, so I was kind of soloing the lane and uh, and pushing it good. And it was uh, it was nice and clear. And I thought, you know, this is a little bit too easy. Let me at least check out the uh, check out the bushes. And that's when it happened. You can go ahead and go to the next one. Do we have any League of Legends players in here at all? Okay, we have one. <laughs> all right, this doesn't really Timo. I hate Timo. Uh, he shrooms bushes. I actually play a little bit of League of Legends, believe it or not, with my pinky. I love it. And uh, uh, so this didn't really fly well. But uh, it's, an awesome, it's an awesome game. I know this is a mobile conference. But actually, what really happened, I was heading down a little, a little hill, and uh, my front tire went into a dip. My back tire uh, caught a rock I didn't see, endowed the bike forward, and I simply hyperflexed my neck. The bike fell on top of me, shattered, shattering my C5. No other bumps, bruises, or scrapes, uh, but that's all it takes, right? So it taught me two things, uh, two real things from, from that point on. I learned that... Uh, the, that was the biggest obstacle I had faced in my life to that, obviously, to this point. Uh, we face a lot of obstacles in development, uh, quite a few of them, big, small, they're all over the place. The biggest, uh, single most uh, important, I think, factor that we can bring to facing obstacles is attitude, um, bar none. Um, and it was, really, it was really attitude that helped me get through this obstacle. The second one is partner finding the right partners. And uh, to illustrate this, obviously with my uh, company, Outsource Report was the name of the company in that time. Um, I struggled really hard. I didn't have any partners. It was a solo gig. I struggled really hard to make it work. I, was, uh, I had released two or three magazines to that point. It was part of my, uh, part of my business. I, even in the rehab facility, I, <laughs> I created, I wrote uh, uh, articles for my magazine and I put out the magazine while I was in the rehab facility dictating the articles to willing family members who had come and literally walking them through over my shoulder in design 
you know, putting together the magazines and, and getting it out. Um, but try as I might, I could not, about a year later, I had to let go of the business. I couldn't meet with the demands, the travel associated with it, and the things that, that was necessary to put it together. Did not have the right partners. In contrast to that, um, you can go ahead and move through the rest. No one really wants to hear about, oh, we can stay here. This is good. In contrast to that, um, this this obstacle brought uh, uh, brought a lot of different um, impact in my life tremendously, and I'll I'll just kind of go down a a, a, a really quick uh, list here of some of the uh, some of the things that come along with a quadriplegia that a lot of people don't know about. Um, obviously, I have no movement from my shoulder blades down. I feel like I'm sitting on a big water balloon most of the time. Um, the uh, I've got loss of mobility. I don't have very many. I, I don't have triceps. I do have a little bit of biceps. Uh, my pinky really is the, the only way that I interact with the computer and uh, with the keyboard. Uh, my diaphragm is the only way I breathe now. Luckily enough, it, it, if it was a little bit higher, I would have lost that and been on a breathing tube as well. But uh, my diaphragm, I sit on it all day long, so I get exhausted that way. My blood pressure is really low. I run typically 70 over 40 or 80 over 50. It just all pools. I don't have any muscles to kind of get it back into my head. So, you know, if I struggle breathing, breathing hard, or if I talk a lot, sometimes I'll just pass out. So if I do that, just don't worry about me. Christian will pick me up and we'll keep on going. Uh, there's, of course, a loss of all other, uh, a whole bunch of other things, bodily functions. Um, but the, uh, some of the biggest things, of course, was the loss of income and occupation for my family. Uh, I have four daughters and was married to Christina for about, 50, uh, about 10 years at that time. Uh, it was a huge impact on my family, obviously. Um, uh, we just about lost our home and the stability that kind of goes along with that. Now, the, you can go ahead and go to the next one. This is me today with my four daughters and, and my wife, Christina. Uh, things worked out. And the reason why it worked out, the right partner. Willing someone with the right value, with the same values, with the same end goal in mind, with this, the willingness to work hard alongside, uh, alongside me, and uh, and that's that's really been the success. Uh, if you look at both my business efforts and my familial efforts side by side in that regard, so attitude is is everything, and uh, really finding the right partners, though difficult, is absolutely necessary all right um so you can go ahead and, and fly yeah this was kind of my second career um i call it my mudslinging career right i did just about everything under the sun for seven years that it ended my it ended my gaming industry career but um i really and i really had no immediate hope about getting back into it because i was uh just trying to keep my head above the water above water it wasn't even a consideration that I might continue, you know, in that in that field. So we did just about everything under the sun. Um, I coded. Well, the good thing about this time is I was always a very technical artist. I wasn't an exceptional artist. I oversaw really exceptional artists. But I was a very good technical artist. And uh, I knew all the processes and procedures and was really good in communicating with the, the uh, engineers. And management was a good thing of mine as well. But... Um, so I learned at this time uh, coding, HTML, or scripting actually, right? PHP, my, my SQL. <laughs> I can't really call myself a coder at all. Um, but I did learn a, a lot of things that, that, uh, that came into play later. And so utilizing, building on that, I finally, about a year ago, I finally, uh, I, I scripted a back end for an online ticket sales business that was actually very productive for us. And able to, it was able to give me kind of a breath. And I was able to sit and lo uh, look at my life and say, okay, where do I really want to go? What do I want to do? And of course, my passion has been the game industry. Can I have just a little swip so people aren't turned off by my clacking? Mm. Thanks so much, sweetheart. So... Um, it was really the game industry, and that's really what I wanted to do. So I set out to prove to myself that I could actually do something. 
and of course uh, came across the Unity engine. Total overkill for my game, but you know, a very simple, straightforward, awesome engine. And so I was able to utilize the Unity engine to uh, to create my game. I created it for my family initially, but they loved it so much that I. Uh, I focused on uh, actually getting it out for Android and, and iOS. I wanted to do, do something sim simple. So let's go ahead and go over kind of the, uh, for those of you who don't know it, uh, check it out. Uh, the website is venabyte.com or just do a search for Blizzwords. And um, just as a really <laughs> quick rundown, just as a really quick rundown, it's a, Yes, it's a word search puzzle game. It's a mix between Boggle and Tetris. As you find words, they disappear. The tiles drop down. So it's a very dynamic changing board. It's a huge board. It's 80, 80 tiles. Um, so there are uh, just a million words. And it's actually quite an addicting game. There's power-ups to manipulate the board uh, uh, when you want to. There's uh, different gameplay modes and different input modes. Uh, and there's a player on the iOS version. There's a player versus player version. And then, so of course, there's word collection to discover and complete. All right, so what did work for me? I think we can move on to the next one. Okay, what did not work for me? Let's go over that first. The things that did not work for me is, number one, no matter how simple, you've got to explain gameplay mechanics <coughs> to your audience. Um... I sat, I sat it down in front of some people and, you know, and the, and the board goes down and, and people don't know exactly how to interact with the board or even what to do. So even, uh, so the, the, uh, the, so it's absolutely vital. And this is a, this is a no brainer, right? It's kind of a duh thing, but uh, a no duh thing, but uh, you've got to explain your gameplay mechanics, no matter how simple. For me, uh, the next thing is uh, I should have released the game two and a half months earlier with just the single player version. Now this is not this is not going to be right for all games, but it was for my game and I, and I'll tell you the reason but I was I was so concerned about I thought the way my product was going to get passed from peer to peer was through the uh with the multiplayer version, you know, player versus player. And I I thought people were going to uh, going to invite players to the game and utilize the PvP portion of the game to actually propagate the game. And what happened is um, I was lucky enough to incorporate a little bit of statistics at the end before I released it so I know how people played the game. And about 95% of the people who actually played this game only utilized the single player version. And very, very few people actually enjoyed the, the PvP portion of it which was counterintuitive to me, but uh, um, so for me, a uh, single player release would have been better and then um, I could have, I could have uh, followed up the social shout outs, if you will, through maybe a Twitter, a Twitter uh, or a Facebook post or something of that nature, which uh, of course uh, may be possible in the future. Okay, uh, also Game Center. For me, in my humble opinion, with my limited experiences, uh, my limited experience with this was uh, a bad idea for me. I was looking kind of for a shortcut, and I cut myself short when it came to Game Center. Um, I ended up, I thought that it would, even for someone who knows PHP and the, the MySQL, I thought that creating my own database for my own statistics was going to take way too much time. And I went ahead and I made a decision and I went forward with it and it was the wrong decision. I ended up writing a bunch of custom code specifically for Game Center and I was locked into it. So, and of course, looking, I, I felt pressured because I wanted to get the game out. Uh, but what I should have done and what would have literally saved me time is if I had gone the, the route that I, that I knew I should have from the beginning, create my own server system where I, can, uh, where I could utilize for the, uh, for the matchmaking, the friend-to-friend -friend matchmaking, um, for the invites, for the shared leaderboards and the achievements, the, the cross-platform connectivity, and then pipe the information if I wanted to later on for um, uh, for player convenience to Game Center, um, so and, and I had to do it for the Android version, anyways, right? Which I which which I've done 
uh, recently. But I, I felt pressured. I thought Game Center, hey, they've got everything all set up. It's going to be an easy fix. And it ended up being two months of code that I wish I could rip out of my, rip, rip out of my game. So, and then, of course, Partners. Partners is the obvious one that, that, uh, uh, that, that I've mentioned before. Now, what did work for me? Very simple stuff. For me, it was Unity, right? They let me focus on the game. It's a well-documented, fantastic community. Um, something I'm going to add to this is the statistics. I am so glad that I had the presence of mind to put in even simple statistics reporting for me. Um, so I knew how people were actually utilizing my game. I would never have known how poorly my PvP was working had I not had some feedback into exactly where my players were going, what, um, what they were using in the actual game themselves. And then, of course, structure. Even, even as an indie developer working with myself, I scheduled myself. I set goals. I set timelines. And I worked hard doing that. Now, I absolutely... Uh, love this industry. Um, you can go to the next one. I, um, you can look beyond that, the silly developer there to a sign that my wife uh, put up uh, in my office that I absolutely love. I love being a part of this industry. I don't know any other industry that is as creatively fulfilling where you can literally, if you are passionate about a message that you want to share, or that you can go out and share that message and create whatever it is that you want to create. So the message I really want uh, to share as well for all of you here, and those of you that are interested in development um, or here for any other purpose, is really to believe in yourself. Uh, believe that you have the ability to make your mark in this industry, that, that you honestly have a contribution to make in this industry. Um, and that this, that this industry is better because you're in it. And so I'd like you to uh, really dig down, find the, the message or the, uh, what you're passionate about, share that with the industry. And, uh, and when you finally believe it, um, then you can pursue it with passion, right? And none of you will get this anyways because you're not, but I'm dressed up in another character's uh, garb here in uh, League of Legends, and I, I apologize for that. I, I, I was hoping. Um, I was okay. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so um, at first of all, so Blizz words a labor of love. It was simple, but honestly, if um, if I can accomplish that with my my pinky knuckle, I I uh, I know that there's nothing. Um, that you can't accomplish in this industry. And I'd just like to share that with you. Thank you so much for your time and for coming. Well, that was fantastic. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, yeah, I'm sure it'd be a TED talk in about a few weeks' time, won't it? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, with no, no further ado, um, you know, have we got questions? Loads of questions. Yeah, absolutely. Like So what's your interface for, for coding, for scripting? Uh, it's actually an old, um, it's an old PC keyboard. Is that, is that what you're asking? Yeah, I do it pinky by pinky. And then I, usually, I use a, um, a trackpad. I either use my laptop uh, track, <coughs> trackpad or just a regular trackpad with my pinky. And that's how I get around. That's well, how I play my is games too. Much easier for you to use? Is that like your... Around the house thing. My my tablet is definitely my around the around the house thing. To be honest with you, I'm really excited about the new Windows Pro tablets. Um, that no no no. I apologize. I I apologize. But I'd love to be able to run you know my serious applications on that and utilize uh, utilize the on-screen keyboard. That's just going to be great for me personally. So. Yeah. Thanks. I love my Windows 8 tablet, uh, uh, laptop touchscreen is brilliant. Yeah. Well, first off, I can I can vouch for uh, Blizz Words. I played it today, and and it's awesome. So, oh, thanks. <laughs> Everyone should, should should get it. But uh, what what did you use for um, statistics reporting? Uh, I, in all honesty, I'm just pinging a uh, my database uh, myself. So, when when people either enter a game, I'm just uh, I'm just pinging. It's just a simple. Uh, I check to see if there's internet connection. And I just ping my own database that I've set up with. Um, 
with the user the user ID and um, what what game that they're playing and uh, you know and and that's it well, whenever they go somewhere in the menu system as well I'm pinging that to my to my server if there's an internet connection so I know I just know where they're going in the app and, and what they're using so does that does that answer yeah, your question yeah, I was just okay No, that was you know. In all honesty, it's it's. I'm simply using a, a Unity's um, web www commands to do that. Yeah. I kind of got a follow-up question on that theme because I was wondering, you know, had you previously done games with you know stats capture? Uh, you know, what what was the motivation? What what made you think to do that? Because I remember working in yeah, PlayStation. Yeah, no, I've never done that before yeah. ever. Um, I was, I, 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 it was so frustrating to me the idea that I'm going to put this out there and not know how people are using it. And since we've got the majority of the tablets, we've got the ability to do that. It, yeah, it came to my mind. And it was something that, uh, it was the very last thing I did right before I uploaded it. But it was simple enough, it's simple enough to do. I did it in a couple hours, you know. And um, No, I mean, absolutely. I mean, when I was working on PlayStation Home, it took a long time to convince the team the capturing data. This is an online service on console. It's yeah. modern, and we still had to go around a back door to get someone else in another team to make it for me, because the own, my own team wouldn't do it. That's yeah, you, you, you pay money for that kind of data, you know, and oh. if you can get it yourself, <laughs> but you uh, couldn't pay enough money for right, that kind of data. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's a better way to state that. Cool. Any other questions? So, what's the price point on each you know, on Android and Apple? And what's the ratio of sales difference between the two? Okay, so I have um, I have a free-to-play version and I have a 99 cent version. The free-to-play version I have uh, both banner ads and interstitial ads, and, uh, and but I've got a limitation of five word, uh, of five-letter words um, on the gameplay, and that's just about it. And then the uh, and then the uh, of course the ads and and as many as many letter words as you want on the the uh, the 99 cent version. I do not have. I, it's been out for about a month. I don't have any market penetration. I have about um, 450 to 500 paid uh, 99 cent downloads, and then about uh, 4,500 free uh, free downloads. To be honest, uh, those are my Apple okay. ones. My Android has been out for about a week, so I don't know. I haven't looked at it. I've been so stressed about this, I haven't looked at my Android. <laughs> 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 it's hard, it's hard. There any more questions? Thank you guys so much for coming. I know your time is very precious. I appreciate you being here. Thank uh, and thank you very much, because I, I really love that, and it's great to see you doing a proper game and not you know, just getting on and, and, and doing it, which I think is something which we all fail to do sometimes. So thanks very much. Thanks, thanks guys.